Do you know what, Oxford fans? That was all right, wasn't it? That was all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the first video of this new season, the 2024-25 season, and Oxford United are back in the championship. The good vibes and the good times are still running wild in Oxford after promotion through the playoffs last season, and no doubt it is going to be a step up in class and quality in the championship, starting with this opening game. Oxford were at home to Norwich City. Without question, Norwich are one of the better sides in this league. So before this game and before this season, really, the biggest question marks for me were just, could Oxford compete? Could Oxford step up and not just survive at this level? Can we be competitive and can we be a decent side? And I'll tell you what, it's only one game in, but so far signs are looking good because Oxford were magnificent today. I was hoping for something similar to that playoff final and we certainly got that. And Oxford ran out deserved victors on their return to the championship. It finished Oxford United 2 Norwich City nil. And just like I do for my reviews of this channel, I'll run over everything. I'll go over the team news, I'll give my review of the game, and I'll give my final thoughts at the end of the video. Please feel free to jump to any point of the video that you like, because I do put timestamps down below. But if you do that, the very least you can do is hit like on this video, because that does help me out so much. And if you do like the content, then consider subscribing. So let's have a look at Des Buckingham's first lineup in this championship season. And not really too many surprises. The biggest one probably being Sam Long starting at right back. This relegates new signing Peter Chioso to the bench. Other new signings, Will Vaux and Slav or they were calling him on Sky today, Slevy Pajeta started in midfield and on the left wing. Tyler Goodrum takes a place on the right wing as our other wingers try to get back to match fitness. On the bench, there's no Matt Phillips or Jack Curry in this squad, but other than that, there were a host of new signings on the Oxford United bench with Matt Ingram, Peter Chioso, Idris El Mizuni, Louis Sibley and Malcolm Ebovi. I'm still not sure how to say that name. They all take their place on the bench. And there's also a place for Gatlin O'Donka, who still, behind Mark Harris, remains the only other fit striker in this squad. Norwich City finished sixth last season and were the beaten playoff semi-finalists. It's all changed since then, though, as Jonas Hoftorop, relatively unknown manager, 35-year-old, comes in from the Danish league and he's been brought in to replace Neil Wagner and he's tasked with changing Norwich's style to make them a more possession-based side. But the big news for the Canaries before this game is the absence of Jonathan Rowe. And I'll be fascinated to know, Norwich fans, your thoughts on this one because he apparently just didn't want to be in the squad today amid rumours that he's going to be imminently leaving to either go to Leeds or Marseille. The other big name that left Norwich's squad was Gabriel Sara, who left for Galatasaray for a pretty penny, I think £20 million, which kind of, again, shows the difference between the two clubs. But Rowe and Sara not being there is a big boost for Oxford United, but this Norwich side still has plenty of quality in it. Josh Sargent, Boja Sainz scored 31 goals between them in the league last season and Callum Doyle starts in defence who signed in on loan from Man City earlier this week. So Norwich are an immediate introduction to the step up in class that Oxford will need to face this season and I was kind of hopeful that Oxford might catch the Canaries a bit cold uh, for it being the opening game with the side still trying to get it used to Torop's style of play. A little bit similar to what Cambridge did to Oxford last season, where Oxford was still trying to get used to things under Manning, and Cambridge kind of just came and, and won the game quite easily while Oxford was still kind of finding their feet. I was hoping for something like that. Spoilers, but it is kind of what we got. Moving on to the game then, Oxford did start this game quickly. Harris nearly getting in behind from a ball from Joe Bennett that was played into the channel. Not the last time you'll hear that. And not the last time you'll hear this as well. With just three minutes on the clock, Tyler Goodrum getting in acres of space on the right-hand side. He fired in a low shot and it looked like it was on a plate for Mark Harris. But somehow Sparky did a massive air shot when all he had to do was tap it into the empty net. But luckily for Harris, the offside flag went up but it was an encouraging start for the U's. Seven minutes on the clock, Brannigan winning the ball from Nunez in midfield and he freed Mark Harris. Maharis played in Plajeta into the penalty area. It was a tight angle and there was nobody else in the box so all Plajeta could do was just drill it goalwards. It was straight at Angus Dunn but Gunn 
did pretty well to just beat the ball away. Norwich hadn't really offered much going forward so far, but it was still the early stages of the game. But nearly some massive mix-ups and mistakes nearly cost Oxford and gifted Norwich the lead. Long ball smacked forward by Norwich and Long and Cumming got into a tangle, which nearly presented a tap-in for Josh Sargent, but Cumming was able to get back and beat it behind for a corner. And again... Just like in pre-season where Oxford were sloppy passing the ball out from the back, they, that continued into the season. And it was Will Vault on his debut giving the ball away cheaply to Science on the edge of the area. But Elliot Moore spared his blushes and got a cross to block the shot very well. Relatively even game at this point with about 20-25 minutes gone with both sides having spells in possession. Oxford probably being the more dangerous and aggressive side. And when they get the ball, they're looking to get forward much quicker than Norwich do. Particularly Goodrum, who started the game very well on. On the right. Norwich's best move of the half came on 25 minutes though and they passed the ball around nicely through the Oxford United press and it was Fashionet who got into space on the Norwich left and his cross looked destined to find Stacey in space coming in on the right hand side but Plahetta did really well to get back and turn the danger behind for a corner. And with the game kind of lulling after 28 minutes, Oxford seemingly out of nothing took the lead. A long ball forward into the channel from Kieran Brown. And Harris, who we know is full of running, got goal side of Hanley, put Hanley under pressure on another day. Maybe a referee might have given a foul against Harris on Hanley, but nobody else was really complaining about it as Hanley went to ground. It meant Harris was in acres of space. He cut inside. He put it through the legs of Gunn just about. Wasn't the cleanest of strikes from Harris, but it worked its way into the goal, squirmed and squeezed into the goal. A brilliant goal from Mark Harris. His hard work and his effort deserved it. Oxford United in the lead. 1-0 to the use. Five minutes later and it should have been 2-0 really, a golden chance spurned by Oxford United. Gunn passed it straight to Volks and about 30 yards out Will Volks had an empty net to just curl the ball into but he put it just wide. He really should have scored that one and Oxford were at that point you were kind of thinking are we going to regret that golden chance? A couple of chances for either side just to end the first half. The first one it was Oxford winning the ball back high once again long on the overlap got on the end of Goodrum's pass, fired in a good ball. Harris, who'd got space in the penalty area, but he just got his angles kind of wrong and got a bit underneath the ball and his header looped over the bar. And just a minute later, it was Norwich's turn to turn the ball over in a dangerous area. This time, probably the only bad thing Brannigan did in the game where he was out-muscled on the edge of the penalty area. Cross from Norwich from their right-hand side found Sainz in space on the left, but his volley... Kindly for Oxford United went harmlessly wide. So an excellent first half for Oxford United came to an end with the U's leading by one goal to nil. And we bought all the hard work and effort that we saw at the back end of last season. Hashling Norwich into mistakes and breaking quickly. Oxford still looked pretty resolute at the back as well. And one of the features was not giving away anything cheap. And despite a couple of little errors, Oxford certainly were defending quite smartly. Norwich will be disappointed so far though as their best chances really did come from Oxford's mistakes and they did look pretty dangerous from corners. But no real tests to Jamie Cummings' goal and Cummings not really having any saves to make and you did sense that Norwich were getting a bit frustrated with their passing through the middle not working and trying to hit long balls forward which played into Oxford's hands. Only half time but so far so good. Change for Norwich at half time, and it was one of their new signings. The man they signed from Salzburg for four million pounds, Amanqua Forson. He came on at half time, and he actually, I thought he looked pretty good. And he replaced Liam Gibbs in midfield. But Oxford did start the second half decently, and on 51 minutes, a corner comes in. Brannigan on the edge of the box got his shot away, but it was deflected and it looped agonizingly onto the crossbar. And Oxford just couldn't get the rebound into the back of the net. So you felt another bit of a let off. But it did not last long as just seven minutes later, Oxford did make it 2-0. And it was another sweeping move, a sweeping break from Oxford United. And Goodrum once again in acres on the right-hand side. But he wasn't 
rushed into his play. He was patient and he allowed Sam Long to get up there on the overlap. overlap. Longy with a first time cross into the area. It was a driven cross by Long with pace. Brannigan getting to about the penalty area and he powered it home. It was almost like Brannigan taking a penalty the way he arrived onto the ball and he wasn't going to miss. Fantastic from Oxford United, deservedly taking a 2-0 lead. All Torop could do was to make changes and two more changes came on and Eder and Sorison entered the fray. Still with half an hour to go, you did feel like this was a long way to go still and Norwich could certainly get back into it, but it was also more and more feeling like the playoff final because Oxford was just so good at shutting Norwich down and Norwich did get into dangerous areas. Oxford was so good at shutting the door, which just prevented the Canaries from getting ahead of steam up and it just really stopped them from working Jamie coming at all in this second half. Oxford made their first change and it was Plaheta who was replaced by another new signing in Idris El Mazzuni. And I I thought Mazzuni looked pretty decent when he came on. He had a couple of late chances. We'll get to that in a minute. But towards the final 10 minutes, and it's the first time in the second half, you really saw Norwich get a couple of chances. Eder, he got onto the, the ball down the left-hand side. Just a ball played into the channel, really, and he did well. It was a low cross at the back post. Stacey arrived onto the ball, but Joe Bennett got out to make a superb block to keep it 2-0. But just two minutes later, you sense this could be the start of a bit of Norwich pressure, as again, Ida causing problems down the left, and he crossed into the box, and it was Sainz who kept the ball alive on the right-hand side this time. He dropped it into Forson on the corner of the penalty area, and he got his low drive away. It was a good hit, but it was straight at Jamie Cumming. But that was really it from Norwich, and it was Oxford who ended this game with two decent chances. El Mazzuni nearly with a dream debut. He gets his shot away on the edge of the box from a corner, which Norwich did well to block, and then he nearly got on the end of a Greg Lee cross after another Oxford United break. But Norwich just got more sloppy, really, just ran out of ideas, and Oxford just were full of motivation, full of energy, right till that final kick of the game, and it was Oxford who get a dream start to this championship season. Going to be out of our depth, they said, going to be nowhere near good enough, they said. Well, we were today, and Oxford United win it by two goals to nil. And that brings me on to my final thoughts, and I start with the visitors in Norwich City, and Norwich fans, I'll be fascinated to know your thoughts on this game obviously the first thing that comes to mind is your opinion on Roe how he's seemingly just not a good look how he just almost like like he didn't want to play in this game and you see the likes of Ida who was who has also got transfer speculation on him but he was quite happy to come off the bench and you see the likes of Sammy Smodix for Blackburn yesterday transfer speculation around him but he still came off the comes off the bench and makes a difference in that game so be interested to know your thoughts on this one but I was hoping that Oxford might just catch you a little bit cold in this one while you're still trying to get used to life under Johannes Thorop and that really was the case I thought you were decent in possessions at times and you could see there were times where you did pass it through the thirds and pass it through Oxford quite well but it was that final ball or that final pass that you, you just couldn't really work any clear-cut shooting chances or really cut Ox's defence wide open. So I'm going to guess you're going to be disappointed with that. I thought that you didn't really handle Oxford's aggression very well in midfield and you just allowed Oxford to kind of do what we've done well under Buckingham at the back end of last season, which was be aggressive, win the ball back high and pass the ball out to the wings and create chances. And I just felt you struggled with that one. I thought Forson looked good when he came on, actually, and I thought Ida looked good when he stuck, came on. I thought wonder whether you maybe should have started with him instead of Fashnat um, starting up front. Didn't really seem too much from Josh Sargent. And just overall, just it felt like Norwich was still a little bit in pre-season mode, a little bit sloppy, and it was almost like a perfect time for Oxford to play you guys. I've no doubt... Again, you probably won't like to hear comparisons to Oxford and Norwich, but it was quite similar to how we started last season under Manning, where it was a new style, a new possession-based style. It took us a while to find our feet. But then when we did, we were very good. I expect this to be the same from you guys. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know where you need to strengthen ahead of your next game. Um, let me know what you thought of this Oxford side. Let me know what your initial thoughts are and hopes for the season. And good luck for the rest of the season as well. It'll be great for Oxford to go back to Carrow Road later on in the season. I expect that will be a much tougher game than what we had today.
And let's move on to Oxford United. And really, the biggest compliment you can just say about Oxford is that this was so similar to that playoff final, where Oxford didn't look out of their depth. Oxford didn't look like they were inferior to Norwich in any way, shape or form. We had a game plan, we stuck to it, and it worked magnificently well. Everything I've liked about Oxford under Des Buckingham uh, since we've had that 5-0 defeat to Bolton was in full evidence. It was a hard-working quartet of players, really, in Will Vault, Rodriguez, Brannigan and Harris. And then being able to win the ball back in midfield and just have that option of wide players that stay wide, which really stretch the play and uh, just get Oxford on the front foot very quickly. But I did think that... Um, particularly Sam Long, I thought, had a really good game at right back today. And obviously he got forward well and supported Goodrum. Could have been easily for him to be out of his depth. A lot of people probably questioning why Peter Chioso wasn't in the side. But once again, Long proving his worth and proving to be a useful addition. Buckingham's already talked about how he likes to use Long when a side is good from set pieces because he helps Oxford defensively. And he certainly did that today. And by no means was... Any Oxford player poor today. I even thought Blahetta worked really hard, did really well. Didn't maybe see the best of him going forward, but there's certainly more to come. But the players that have made that step up really impressed me today, particularly Mark Harris. His work rate was exceptional. It deserved a goal. He's, he, I just wonder how Oxford just can't keep running him into the ground, though. We're going to have to bring some different players in. But so far, just a wonderful start for him, picking up from where he left off last season. Goodrum just can do no wrong for me at the moment. He, everywhere you play him, he just makes a difference. He's Again, he's so tenacious, winning the ball back. But he's, you can just tell he believes he belongs at this level as well. He's got that excellent touch touch of class he's able to beat a man as well and whether you play him in the middle or whether you play him on the wing he's going to force his way demand his place in this Oxford United side and Cameron Brannigan was wonderful just at the heartbeat of everything just you know you're going to get a hundred percent effort from Branners but he wasn't just greedy he didn't overplay his part like you saw him do sometimes in league one he used the ball really smartly he won his tackles and he deserved his goal as well just shows you how Des Buckingham has really got this just channeled this Oxford United side now and has got them playing to sing into his hip sheet is the words I was looking for. And this is just a dream start that we wanted. And we move forward with so much enthusiasm now as we go into this League Cup game against Peterborough and then again on Friday night against Watford, I believe. But it'd be interesting to see what changes we make for this Peterborough game. Are we going to see the likes of Evi Ovi? Are we going to see the Abuvi? I can't remember how you say his name properly. Let me know down below um are we going to see matt phillips play are we going to see el mazuni play um are we going to see odonka play i'd actually be keen to see odonka play up front or maybe you could play uh rodriguez up front as like a kind of a false nine um up there I, I just don't think we can afford to play harris i think we need him for these league games i'd much rather see oxford just give odonka a go um it's not the end of the world if we do go out in this League Cup round one as much as we still want to beat Peterborough um, and keep kind of like uh, bragging rights over them. But the league form is going to be crucial. But what a start to this campaign, as I've said below. Leave your comments down below. Things aren't supposed to be this good, are they? They're not normally supposed to be this good for Oxygen. I'm just still kind of waiting for things to go wrong in this game. But so far, the things are... They were perfect in the play and final. They were perfect in the game today, barring a couple of sloppy little moments where we nearly gifted a couple of chances to Norwich. But it's an amazing time to be an Oxford United fan, so enjoy it, Oxford fans. Enjoy your Saturday evening, and I'll be back to do a review of this Peterborough United game. Thank you so much for continuing to support this channel. I hope you do did go and like the videos I did, the uh, reviews of the exhaustive review I did of the season split up into three parts. So if you haven't checked those videos out and you've got the time, please do check them out. They're on the channel. Put like little fun, what the thumbnails look like on the screen now. But what a start. We'll move on to the League Cup on Tuesday night. So once again, enjoy your evening and I'll be back very soon.